Hey, what's up everyone? It's Omar from the Bullish Bears team. Um, I wanted to make a quick video building my watch list for tomorrow, which is February 27th, 2017. Um, uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just I'm, I'm using Think or Swim, by the way. And um, what I want to do is I just want to go here and I want to go create watch list and I'm going to date it to... 27, 17, I'm going to hit save, that's going to replace that, and for those of you that haven't watched my videos before, um, you should go and uh, subscribe to the channel, um, I'm on uh, Bullish, uh, oh man, I didn't mean to close that, I'm on, uh, let me go to YouTube, just show you guys, Here it is. Yeah, so this What's up, everybody? It's Omar from the Bullish Bears team. My, uh, this is uh, the channel that I belong to, and it's called uh, Bullish Bears. I also, when I post the link, it, I have my own, which is Watch Old Trade. You can subscribe to that as well. But I'm linked with this group of traders. Um, um, called bullish bears which hey what's up buddy? they're fantastic um so if you type bullish bears and this is it stock market community if you go there <clears throat> all right you can just go to playlists and then you change the grid to list and then you can find all of my videos down here where it says omar's momentum trading so if you come here i, I probably i think i put together don't let another day of smart trip um, the one that I initially started with was this momentum, tra momentum trading strategies for beginners. That's what you should kind of watch first. And then I would watch the custom, sense, uh, custom scan setup on, for momentum trading. Um, I would probably wa I, I would watch, have you watch that second and then how to create a watch list using Think or Swim. So this shows you like, you know, my whole strategy on, on uh, penny stock trading, short cap, you know, just really trading stocks. And... Um, how to create all my um, scanners that I use on Think or Swim and how I build all my watch lists and stuff. So, you know, just watch, subscribe and watch. Okay, so with that said, <clears throat> all right, for those of you who watched my, um, watch, um, my videos before, what I do is I go to scan and I usually have this criteria that I use to find my plays. So I do my nightly scan, which is anywhere between 20 cents and $30 that have a million minimum volume flow of 500,000 shares traded or there's no max and then the the percentage is up 5% higher or 5% or higher and then you know you hit scan and for Friday we have 50 plays all right now you could take whatever scanners you create here and pull them here so you go here you go to personal and you know here it is nightly scan big movers which is already there and what I do is I just go to charts and I look through the charts I got the 1 minute chart here I got the 5 minute uh, five minute five day chart here and we'll go through our place so what I'm gonna do is filter by the biggest percentage and work my way down so I click the filter and CMP was the biggest percentage changer for the day so what we'll do is we'll click and see that so five days ago this stock was trading at around 318 um, as of Friday pre-market this thing gapped up it went from 324 to 418 I'm sorry 480 and then it just kind of like you know at the market open this is the one minute chart it was selling off it found its support here and it kind of quickly gapped up to about four four seventy four and then kind of faded and just consolidated sideways all day i mean this is because it is overextended right because this the general range if you look at the stock five over five days this is normally in the three dollar range right and it's still up in the 430s so what does that tell you tell you that it's overextended and it's probably a good opportunity to be short i don't like these patterns when the stock looks like it's all choppy but you know it could potentially be a uh, short for monday for tomorrow i'm not going to put it on my watch list but you could if you theoretically could wanted to if you're a short seller which i i am i'm a huge short seller that's pretty much all i like to do short you may watch this and may want to get a short, you know, see what happens in the open. It might sell off. That's what my expectation is going to sell off at the open. All right, let's move on. Z, yeah, no, no, no value, choppy stock, um, don't like it. All right, and that's what I mean. You see, there's not a lot of volume here. You see, it's like 
you know, it's not, it's not, it's not being traded much. That's what I mean. When some people are asking, well, what do you mean by that? That's just what I mean. It's not. You want a stock that has a lot of volume, at least a minimum or more. It's only been traded seven hundred eighty-seven thousand shares. Okay, um, EBW. All right, here we go. Yeah, this is a stock that I was watching <clears throat> earlier. Look at the channel that it's forming now. It's at one point eight million shares. It opened right at eight dollars and thirty cents. It had a high of ten twenty, and it closed. As you see it, it five days ago, this was trading at eight eighty one, and it gapped up to ten fifty five. And then look at this, it collapsed. So guess what's gonna happen? This this stock, right? The market's gonna open. It may have a little pop. And I bet you right here around this 1055, 1050, I bet you in the 1050, 1055 range, it's gonna find <clears throat> right. This is gonna be resistance, and I bet you it bounces off this and sells off. This is gonna be a great short opportunity. It's somewhat liquid, 1.18 million shares traded. It will absolutely go on my watch list. And I look for stocks that have this trend that are trending upwards, closing holding their highs. And the reason why you look for stocks that are holding their highs or close to their highs is because other stock traders are looking at this and these are the stocks that people tend, you know, will, they will tend to trade more, okay? You know, there's no hidden secret. You just kind of think, what is everybody else looking at, you know? So that's that's sort of the formula, all right? Moving on, Zen. So Zen, I mean, this thing ripped at the market open. It went from 222, hit a high of three bucks, a little, right, a little over three bucks. And then it kind of uh, sold off. And, the, and that's no, the reason, you know, guys, um, whole numbers are psychological resistance points. So when I mean by whole numbers, I mean a dollar, a dollar fifty, two dollars. So those are psychological resistance barriers. And sometimes you'll see a stock hit a whole number and just sell off because it just hit a whole number. And people are thinking the same thing and they just sell and take their profit. So, you know, this thing ripped. I mean, at the open, it went, you know, by like, uh, by like, what time was this? 9.50, it already it already hit its max, its peak for the day, and then it just kind of consolidated so low. It could have been a great short, too. You could have shorted this back down. If you had shares to short. Um, <clears throat> you know, and it's been running sideways, all right? Um, you know, stocks that, and I don't know, maybe, I don't know what was the catalyst to making it run. Probably was some sort of news. Nothing here. Um, there's nothing here that I see. But there might have been some news on it. I'm going to go to my stocks to trade account, and I'll pull up Zan. Just so you can see, sometimes you got to dig a little deeper to find if there's any news. And I can go here to where it says news. And no, I didn't, I didn't see anything. Let's see on the Twitter feed. Yeah, Ross was watching this. Yeah, a lot of other people were watching this. But I didn't see any news. It probably, it probably was news. I think you may have to dig a little deeper. Or it could have been a pump. You know, sometimes these stocks rip because a chat room pumps it, you know. And what happens is... You're a guru, you know, like Tim Sykes or Ross Cameron. They say, oh, you know, I'm in this stock, you know, I'm long. And what happens is they get in early before you. You guys will see it and because you guys just follow whatever you, they say. They say, you drive this, they drive the price of the stock up and they get out and they look like, you know, they look like gods. But really, they just pumped and dumped the stock on you guys. So you got to be careful about that. So I'm not going to put this on my watch list, but, you know, maybe Monday it has a little, a little, Rip and then it pulls right back. All right, let's keep moving on. IPCI is another stock. And look, it, it ripped pre market on Friday. This is one thing you got to be careful, guys. When a stock is moving pre market, you see where we went from 230 all the way to 302. So it hit 302 by 8 14 a.m. on Friday and then it kind of consolidated and sold off the rest of the day. Sometimes people see this and they, they have the expectation that it's going to continue to run. Be careful when a stock spikes like that pre market. Sometimes that's its run. The run will just happen pre-market. And you got to be careful to see what it's going to do. So a stock like this, you watch in the open, it sold off. It did find its support level um, somewhere in this area here between, um, what is this below? It was uh, two, 252 in the 252, 254 range. And then it had this little pop um, where you could have like, you know, dip bought it right in here. But, you know, it's happened really fast and you have to be quick and, you know, you, you know, so when I see choppy stocks like this, and they, uh, you know, if I'm not shorting it, I'm not looking at it. <clears throat> All right. So, and I don't like the way the chart, you know, it kind of, you know, consolidated sideways all day. It held. So this is sort of its new support level, this 250 range sort of, you know, so it's in this 250 range all day. And, you know, and then after hours, it, it popped again. So, I mean, theoretically, could you watch it? Yeah, I mean... You know, this is what I would do if I was watching this and I see, and I saw it break its so um 
if the support level of 250, 249, I would short it. That's what I would be looking to do. If it had volume, all right? The stock, you know, it traded. It was 5.9 million shares. You know, it could have a little pop at the open, you know, but we'll see. Uh, I'm not really big on it, to be quite honest with you, but I'm going to see if there's other plays. Let's move on. OWCP, yes. OWCP is a stock that I would absolutely put on my watch list. This is a pump. This is that stock that I wore, that I told everybody when I made my watch list last week. When it was up here, I, I forget what day it was. It was on the 22nd. I, I Actually, on this day, I made a watch list on the 21st, and I said that this stock was going to rip and then sell off because it was so overextended. Five days ago, you know, it was at 69 cents, and it was up from 30 to 323 the dog shit company, you know, and it sold off, and then it found its new support level here at 143, and now it's ripping. Guess what? I expect this to keep moving up, okay, tomorrow. But guess what's gonna happen? It's gonna they, they're gonna pump it maybe another day or so, and then it's gonna get close to the three dollar mark and collapse. So yeah, I would be looking to see what this is gonna do. I mean, it may collapse at the open, but my expectation is that it's gonna it's gonna have it's gonna move at the open. So you know, be on the lookout for that. All right, and the reason why it really falls on my watch is more than anything else is because of stock that's, you know, gapped up and it closed holds in its highs. That's what I look for, all right? CEI, <clears throat> ah, choppy stock, you know, this is ugly. When you, if you're looking at these and you think that they're going to, like, let's say you say, you know what, I'm going to buy this stock because I think that this stock is going to close, um, um, it's going to close, it's going to close higher than it opens and, you know, I'm going to just hold it the whole day. You know, you don't want to then look at a one minute time frame when it's choppy like this. What you may want to do is you may want to watch it on like, um, you may want to watch it on like, let's say like a 15 minute time frame where it's a little bit cleaner to follow. You see, there's a 15 minute candles and it's a little easier to follow on a 15 minute time frame. Okay. And theoretically, if you thought that, yeah, you would have bought it at 73 cents and held it and just, it would have closed at 84 cents. So, you know, it, it, it gapped up and you could have made some money if you're looking to swing it. But if you're day trading, this is harder to day trade. But you could have. You could you would have made some money. It gapped up. You know, it wasn't heavily it wasn't heavily traded. It wasn't a lot of volume toward the end of, it, it picked up toward the end of the day. Alright, so with that said, it's not going on my watch list. CLSD, this is a stock that I would probably put on my watch list. Now, <clears throat> the reason why I'm I'm hesitant is because it really didn't have no volume. But these are those stocks when this is what I've noticed. I've only been trading for about a year. Um, but what, but you know, I've studied the market for a lot longer before I ever made a trade. When I see stocks like this, like CLSD, where they gapped up, but they have low volume, they usually tend to continue to gap up the following day. And they may be a p good potential swing trade. If you look at the five day chart, this was at 760 and it kind of collapsed down to 650, found its support level there. And it's kind of gapped all the way back up to 815. Now, what I usually do is to get do a little more research is I'll check the yearly chart and I'll see where it is. So, you know, la last year, this was back in um, October, this thing was at a high of 2508. And it just, you know, sort of, you know, collapsed and then found and gap back up and collapsed up since. And then now it's, so it's really low. This may be like a cheaply priced stock that may gap up. I mean, if you're looking at it on the yearly, had its first green day here. I mean, its next support level is is actually 818 if it, if it can break this the high here is 815 and yeah so it's right there if it breaks this you have about another you know 20 cents of room at 843 and it continues to gap up but if it can get past 10 10 10 50 i mean there's nothing really stopping this from getting to like 14 bucks you know so this may be something that you might want to swing i'm going to put it on my watch list but this is not you know it's not very liquid but it may be something you may want to think about swinging. So let's move on. Uh, BLPH. All right, there's a stock that yeah gapped up to 144, consolidated. It's gapping up into the close. Over the last five days, this stock was at a high of 168. This stock was at fucking 90 cents five days ago. Um, you know, I don't really like it. I mean, it might be a good short. You can put it on your watch list. I'm not gonna put it on mine. VUSH. All right, there's a stock choppy, not a lot of volume. But these are one of those stocks, like I said, that, you know, when they move like this and they don't have a lot of volume, these are those little sleepers that you can buy like a thousand shares and just leave it alone for a few days and you find yourself up two bucks, two dollars, you know, and it's above VWAP, you know, this is my VWAP indicator, this is my 9 EMA and this is my 20 EMA indicator. Um, you know, over the last five days, I mean, this was at 620, it's up to 640. I mean, I'm not going to put it on my watch list, but 
you can watch it. You know, you can do the year. You know, you can check the yearly and see where it's at. The high was nine eighty. Seems to be gapping up. You know, it's breaking this. I don't know. I'm not gonna put it on my watch list, but maybe maybe something you may want to think about. All right, moving on. E T E H T H. This thing opened at ten thirty. It had a high of twelve fifty. Yeah, look at this. This gap. But this is one of those other stocks that you know doesn't have a lot of volume, but it did move. You know. It, you know, I'll put it. I'll put it on my watch list just because it moves so much. And you know, this may be a good potential short. I mean, let's see where it was over a year. You know, I mean, this was at, at its highest. It was at fifteen fourteen. It's approaching the twelve seventy nine mark. So this seems to be, you know, right here twelve seventy eight. You know, so you may have some upside on this. You know, but uh, you know, if you got a, you know, I don't know if you got a sizable account. You know, you got ten grand in your account or whatever. You know, you take a. You know, thousand share position. You put a stop loss of maybe you know, depending on you want to do percentage of numbers. I like to say I don't want to lose no more than like three hundred dollars. So whatever equates to three hundred dollars, you put as your stop loss, and just see what it does. I mean, you could theoretically do that if you wanted to. You know, um, <clears throat> I'll put it on the watch list. But this thing, I think, is gonna be a great short. Actually, it's gonna be a great shorting opportunity. Um, all right. That said, let's move on. So, fuel. Let me go back to the daily chart. Yep, this is a stock that was at 264, closed 309. It held its highs, has over a million shares traded. This is absolutely stocks that I like to watch and put on my watch list. This is exactly what I look for. All right, next up, <clears throat> AUPH. AUPH opened at 311. It hit a high of 360 by uh, 1004. Hey, look at it, consolidated sideways, okay, and found its new support level in this range, about 350 range, and then closed holding its high. A U P H, you know, and you know you you and what you should be doing is I'm just building my watch list quickly, but what you want to do is like you see it, you should have a plan to say, okay, where it was five days ago? Five days ago it was up at this three, you know, eighty, three ninety level, right? And when it hit that last time, it kind of just sold off and it and back down to this like three ten, three twenty level. So what you should be anticipating is probably a move to short at some point. You should be watching this. Maybe it pops at the open. But you're gonna say, hey, you know, I know that somewhere in this 380, 390 range, if it don't break it, it's probably gonna just come back down and I'll short it back down. And that's what I like to do, man. To me personally, I like shorting. Shorting, I think, is a lot easier. It's what all the retail traders do. It's what Tim Sykes, all these guys really make their money on. Except Ross Cameron is the only one that I see like longing. That's but everybody else loves shorting, and I think shorting is the way to go. You know, so <clears throat> You know, what I like to do is I, I actually like to watch a stock rip at the open like this. So, you know, if you're looking to buy the stock, and I'll make another video more about entries. Let's do this. <clears throat> and you're not sure where to buy. And I got this really from Russ Cameron. I like the strategy where you're looking for a stock that's kind of forming a flag. This is hard to sell, but this is actually a little bull flag. And you see it extends outward. And once it hits the 90 MA, it gaps up. And this is your entry right here. So you see the flag, the bull flag pattern forms in, it gaps up, that's your entry on the one minute chart. Now, then you're doing that if the stock is super volatile. If it's moving, but not moving crazily really fast, then you look at the five. And then, you know, if you're watching it, it's gapping up, you're not sure where to enter. You see right here where the pullback is. Once, it, once the candle breaks the high of this previous candle, right here at that 339, that's, that would have been my entry. And let's say, let's say I missed that entry, right? Let's say I just happened to find the stock and it was here, 346. And it was the first time I've seen it, right? And I'm looking at, and maybe I don't feel comfortable doing the one minute. I want to look at the five minute. Well, what I would do is on the five minute, I would see, like, when's the next pullback? So it's gapping up, gapping up, gapping up. I would see that once it pulled back here, this is, it, it pulled back to VWAP here, right? And then it kind of consolidated right in, right in here. Once it consolidated, right? Once it breaks... Here, I might have, you know, jumped in, but, you know, at this point, you're looking at the one, and it's rolling over. It's rolling over. MACD is rolling over, so it's telling you that it's going to sell off, you know? So you got to be careful, you know, when you do this. I really like to work off the one-minute chart because the one-minute is, you know, you know, the one-minute when a stock market opens, and if it's ripping, I like to look at the one because the one, you know, because the stock moves so fast, and you can find your entries a lot easier on the one, but... Um, if, if it's moving, you know, slowly throughout the morning, then I like the five minute because you get a nice clean entry on the five minute, all right? But, um, you know, if you're watching this stock all day, you know, and you see it consolidate, you're like, hey, if it breaks high of day, which is this, at this point, is this, like right in here, 
So you put your, you know, your little trend line there and you could, you know, alert it, say, hey, if it breaks higher day, this is my entry, 360, and I could have rolled it into the close. All right. That's what, that's what a lot of stock traders do. They saw it break higher day and they bought it to the close. All right. With that said, let me keep moving on. FTM, FTMDF, nope. OREX, yeah, OREX, look at this, 380, ripped all day, close holding its highs. So I'm just going to put on my watch list. You guys can watch and figure out what the stock is going to do. All right, remember, just look at support and resistance, see where it's at. Look, uh, last time it hit a high 520. So this thing ripped pre-market and then came back down. You know, it's normally in the, <clears throat> if you look at it, it's normally trading in a 380 range. Uh, 3, 4, 20, and just gapping up. So let's see. If it can break 471, you might get a little bit more traction. But my best is that if it does rip, it'll rip a little bit, and then it'll come around the seller, and then just kind of fall back down. But you never know. Remember, always check, too, see what it's done. You could check what it's done over 20 days, what it's done over the year. Over 20 days, look, this is where it hit that 570 mark, so it may continue to rip. What happens is when a stock rips and it's a formal ripper, like, you know, it may move for multiple days. This stock has had one, two, three, four, five green days. So guess what? More than likely, it's going to pull back to tomorrow, and you're going to have a good short entry. You know, I could be wrong, but that's what would be my guess. Stocks don't keep running forever, right? So with that said, let's keep moving. Uh, ALXXF, nope, STXC. This is an expensive stock, but this is a stock but no volume. But this is a stock that I would like because it was held this hard. And, but it doesn't really have a ton of volume. But you know what? I'll put it on there for people that maybe trade options and buy contracts. You know, they may want to trade that. Uh, TBIO, no, nah, no volume. Uh, I don't like the chart. It's really choppy. EMPH, uh, it did close holding its highs. It had 1.4 million shares traded. And it's an ugly, choppy stock. I mean, you don't really, you can't really get a sense of what it's really going to do. You know, to get a cleaner sense of this, you know, you could, you could do like the, you know, one day, you know, 15 minute, and it's a lot cleaner to follow when, you know, choppy, when the stock is that choppy. So it went from 160, hit a high of 188, and then kind of came down, consolidated here, and then ripped into the close. I mean, over five days, this thing was normally trades at the 170 range, uh, 159 is the low. I mean, you could look at it. I don't like it, but, <clears throat> I mean, theoretically, could you watch it? Yeah. Um, this could be, you know, potential, see what it did over the last year. Um, it is trading in a channel. And, you know, so theoretically, you could swing this and see if it breaks. I mean, this thing, uh, I don't know. I mean, it is in a channel right now. I mean, you could, you could theoretically take it for a long time. I'll put it on the watch list. I don't think it's going to do anything, though. But I'll put it on there. <clears throat> All right. So let's keep going. E G H C yeah look at this wow this thing the end of the end of the day it didn't do nothing all day and it must have been some news uh, that probably broke it yeah uh, what was it presents to Morgan Stanley da, 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 da. No, right. this is your search oh they they were there was an acquisition there was an acquisition they must have acquired a company I'm not gonna read the news but that's what it was it was a potential sale and that's what drove the price of the stock up now. Now, this is what I would do, right? If, if the stock is gapping up like this, right, it closed, and it just had this crazy spike, you can look over the last year, see what it's done. It's over, I mean, it's overextended, right? This is normally a tie, you can buy that, it's high. This is probably going to short, come right back down, you know? You could probably, what I would do is I would watch this to, to see if I could short this back down. Now, let's say you go, wow, well, Omar, it's 1675 and I only have a $5,000 account. Who gives a shit? If you're going to, if you trade 100 shares of it, and you short it, and you and it goes down a whole dollar. You made a hundred dollars. I mean, you know, it, it doesn't seem like, but that's how you build your account. And psychologically, it's a win for you because, um, you know, you got a winning trade, and that's and that is what what should is that and that's what should matter, you know. So if the market, you know, if you don't find anything and you see a winner there, I take it. You know, who gives a shit? You know, you made hundred dollars is a hundred dollars more than you had. That's how you gotta look at the market, you know. TPC, so, um, nah, don't like it, LPJC, see, there's a stock that, you know, ripped, but it had it no volume, but this day moves, it's been moving, I mean, it was 1670 uh, a couple of days ago, and it's at 20 bucks, so it's definitely overextended, doesn't have a lot of volume, but, you know, 
you know, it, it, it's, it's next resistance point is at 2046. If it can get past 2046 and 2076, 2096, then you could, you know, it could potentially run to $22. Do I, do I think it's, you know, I'm not going to put it on my watch list, but keep it in mind, if you're watching this video, you may want it, right? You may want, especially if you trade options, all right? It doesn't have a lot of volume. Next up, THLD, <clears throat> nah, SEM, nah, I see sideways. I don't look at stocks like this. Even though it did gap up, I mean, this could be a potential good short, actually, because it's overextended, but I'm not going to put it on my watch list. And we want things that are going to pop at the open and make our money quick, right? T, T, V, T, Y. Nah, I mean, it's overextended. This was this would be a great short or put if you're buying options. I mean, this is over in an overextended stock. H-E-E-S. This is a stock that, you know, ripped nicely, you know. It was gapped up real nicely, but, you know, not a lot of volume. These are very expensive stocks, so I'm not going to put them on watch list because I know most people are not going to trade these. But if you're watching this video, it may be, it may be useful to you. W-K. All right, nah. Gapped up, but it's sideways. It's choppy. No volume. P-H-M-D. Nah, look at this choppy crap. J A G X uh, gapped up and it's kind of been sideways ever since. Nah, N A K D, N A K D ripped. They had that little rip, that little pop, and they consolidated. I mean, this might be a good short tomorrow, but I'm not gonna put it on my watch list. A D X, A D X, A X D X, and yeah, this thing consolidated, came back down. The pop happened in pre market. GBX, GBX, yeah, look at this, this thing ripped, um, had 1.9 million shares, this stock that I traded before, that's why, you know what, um, it's, it's, this may be a great short tomorrow, because it's, it has all these resistance points, but it, it, it could potentially get up to, it's at, close at what, 20, 2860, what is it, close at 28, 2017, I mean, it's expensive, but I'll put it on the watch for this, I'm trying to, you know, Stay away from me, but this 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 has some momentum and this could be a, a great short opportunity tomorrow. All right, let's see. ADP, ADP, yes, Avon, right? Four nine, close at four fifty seven, and totaling its highs. See what it'll do Monday. All right, uh, Gale, Gale, the stock sixty two seventy two came back sideways. Nah, I don't like it. Choppy. It's not my. Oh nope. PLX. Yeah, it's too choppy, man. I don't like these. I mean, it did close holding its highs, and, you know, but, nah. SPKE? Mm, nah. Even though it did spike. Uh, IGHG? I nope. SGY? SGY? Uh, mm, this, is, this is a stock, eh. I mean, it, it spiked at the open, and then it came down, and it found its support at 640. I mean, you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if the open tomorrow, this stock kind of has another little rip at the market open and it solidates. This is a stock that always tends to move a lot. Um, you know, it has more to give back, to get back down. I mean, you could put it in the watches. I'm not, but you could keep an eye on it. SSRI, I'll open that 11, hit high 12, and this came back down. These are the stocks that I love to watch. These are my favorite kind of stocks where they kind of rip. And what I like to do is really more focusing on shorting is I like to watch the stock kind of just have its run and then what I do is, <clears throat> when it's having its run, I like to see this where it's forming the head and shoulders pattern. So you see the shoulders forming. It has this little bull flag, and it's already had a couple of pulls. So you know it's going to pull back. And then right when it peaks, it gives you like that FU breakdown where the MACD rolls over. And you just short into this and just watch it go all the way down. It's nice and slow, short, nice and easy to make your money. These are the ones that I like to watch. Those are my favorite. I'm not going to... I'm not gonna um I'm not gonna put on my watches though. THC is a stock that opened at 20 and you know it's closing almost at its highs. I'm gonna put it these are more expensive though. Um let's put C K E M is a stock, went up to 10, hit 11, came back down. Love shorting these. These are my favorites, man. They're so easy to short. Uh S Q N S, T O P S, nope, nope, U M C, nope, V S A R. It did hold the ties, but not a lot of volume, but uh, you can put it on your watches, so I'm not going to put it on mine. SPNC, nope. TGTX, nope. Choppy. And RG, uh, RLGY, yeah, it ripped and it came back. Nope, so these are all the stocks that are on the watch list, and we look at 
You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve stocks, which is good. You know, you know, just because I have twelve or fifteen stocks on a watch list doesn't mean I'm trading them. You know, it, I'm just these are the stocks that are, are on my current watch list. But remember, I have these gap scans, and I find a lot of my plays using these gap scanners. Okay, this is where you find this is where momentum traders, you know, day traders to find most of their plays. Sometimes it has none to do with the watch list. Right? It has a lot more to do with what you see happening the morning of. You know, sometimes your watch list are duds, you know. But I expect these, at least these in these one to five dollar range stocks, um, to move tomorrow. So keep your eye on these. But you know, maybe you'll be able to play happens between some today and you know tomorrow. Noon something happens. So this can all change, right? Well, with that said, um, just enjoy your Sunday. And I hope this uh, you found this informative. You know, hit me up on Twitter, uh, Facebook. Join the group on Facebook, the, the um, Bullish Bears community. That's really where I'm active on, right? And enjoy your Sunday, guys.